Hey everybody, I'm looking here at my Amish paste tomatoes and I wanted to just show you one little quick tomato technique that you need to do with your tomato plants. And that is to pinch off the lower branches. See there, it's got some holes in it from a little bit of fungus that's mostly coming out because of the early spring rains and probably planted too early. But what I always do with my tomatoes is I pinch off the lower growth so that the bottom portion, as it grows, is clear of any kind of leaves. And what that does is it prevents any of the backsplash from the soil from getting up on the leaves. And if you are familiar with any of the diseases that tomatoes commonly get, uh, the different wilts and different things like that, they're, a lot of them are fungal based. And so those funguses live in the soil and they'll bounce back up from rain splashing or just regular water splashes. So if you can keep the top, say 12 to 16 inches or so, clear on the bottom of your tomato plant, you'll reduce a lot of those fungal diseases. And I just kind of generally do that as I go. Right here, I probably have about six to eight inches somewhere, it's probably more like six really, uh, that I've got cleared. And as this top growth continues to come up and grow, I'm gonna pinch off these other leaves, but I wanna leave them on and just do this gradually so that as they grow, they're still able to produce lots of energy for the plant and they'll keep on growing good. So that's one of those and, and I'll show you again here and I'll show you this too. See this? That's a sucker coming up. A lot of times you want to remove those suckers if they're not a branch that you want to continue to grow and you just pinch it off there in the corner. That's real easy to do. But here I'm just going to pinch off those extra leaves that I don't need because they're on the bottom and continue to let the plant grow. So I'll do that for all my tomatoes as I go around. This one I've already done over here clear and then over here this one's a yellow gooseberry so I've got a few here that I can easily come in and pinch off and I'm kind of getting the suckers at the same time so just one little thing you go around monitor your tomato plants and pinch off those lower leaves one other thing I'm doing is this is and I'll talk more about that later but this is a weed in my garden called curly dock so it's got some really huge leaves and it's full of nutrients. So what I'm doing is I'm harvesting those leaves because it's a weed and I'm putting it around the tomato plants as kind of a, a mulch. And it'll break down eventually and those nutrients will go down into the soil. Curly Dock, if you've ever tried to pull it out, has a really deep taproot. So it's able to access those nutrients at the very bottom of the topsoil areas. So it's really good stuff to put back into your soil that turns it into a more usable form for the tomatoes. So that's one thing I'm doing here. I'm trying to use the weeds that I've got. I'm reducing the weeds at the same time as I'm using them as a beneficial uh, nutrient for my tomato plants. So right here you see my mustard plants. They are forming their little seed pods. And I'll come back over here and I'll collect them later and use them to help grow more mustard seed. Some of it will probably end up on the ground, which will end up self-sowing, turn into more mustard plants, uh, which is good. Not a bad problem to have. Mustard is like never bothered by any pest that I have ever seen. Deer leave it alone, the rabbits leave it alone, and I would recommend planting it around your plants as a companion plant just because it'll help protect them. It'll disguise the plants, and if they come over and they try a nibble of it and it's too spicy for them, they're not gonna to wanna to eat the other plants that are around it. And I know I've talked about cilantro several times before, but here it's flowering. And that's exciting because it means we'll get to harvest the seed and it's gonna attract some beneficial pollinators and insects to the garden. Things like lace wings, which we love lace wings because they, their larvae eat a lot of things that we don't like, like the aphids, which I've actually had quite a bit of an issue with aphids this year. Here is some more of that mustard, and this stuff was just all self-sown. It's all gone here. I guess I had plants over here last year, and I let them go to seed, and they popped out. It's really tasty mustard. It's not extremely spicy, but it does have a hint of some spice to it. It's really good. So here are the peppers. This is an orange bell pepper. There's another orange bell pepper, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the tomato plants and remove off these lower leaves. Uh, because they're really not necessary and I want to encourage the growth to go higher just like that so it's pretty simple 
Uh, if you'll notice in here, I put in some chives right there. That's a companion plant. It goes well with the peppers. And also over here, this is a basil. The weather's kind of taking a little bit of a beating on it, but it's um, actually cinnamon basil, which has a really delicious uh, fragrance and taste to it. So I highly recommend it, cinnamon basil in your garden. Basil is one of those great companion plants that you can put with your tomatoes and your pepper plants to uh, kind of ward off things. I've found that ever since doing those, I've pretty much gotten rid of my uh, hornworm problems. Tomato hornworms are terrible. They're actually tobacco hornworms, but they're they pretty much like anything. But ever since I put the basil and started doing companion planting with basil, they've pretty much stayed completely away from the garden. Now you'll notice there I've got some strawberries in a flat that I haven't transplanted out to anything. These are actually rescues from another area of the garden that I don't really have a place for right now. And since we hope to be moving in the next two years, then I'd like to have some of these to move over to the other place. So and there's some mums I grew in the fall. And I'm kind of using this little bed as a holding area, at least until the peppers get a little bit larger. So when I water these, it's gonna go down into the soil of the raised bed and kind of trying to be efficient with the water use. But I'm gonna go back over there. You still see I've got pots out from when I was covering from the frost. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on those pepper plants Make sure that the leaves down at the bottom area are no longer present to help avoid any of those diseases that could happen. And then I'm just going to let them grow. Now this little pepper plant you see is starting to put out a blossom. At this stage you really don't want them to do that. So I'm going to pinch off those blossoms as they form and that way the plant's exerting more energy into growing because the first few weeks I really want to put out a lot of good growth on those leaves. That way it has more to create more fruit later. So I hope this was helpful to you as you go through and start growing your tomatoes and peppers. And just remember to keep limbing them up, pull off any kind of bad leaves and everything like that. And if something looks strange, something looks diseased, then don't put it, don't just leave it laying around, throw it in a bucket somewhere and get rid of it. Okay, you don't even want to compost stuff with diseases because you don't want that stuff to hang around in your soil and you don't want to accidentally reinfect something in following years. So, anyway, I'm Dave from Growing the Home Garden. Thanks for watching this video. If you don't mind, please like and subscribe and uh, we'll have more garden content coming your way.